Hello guys, welcome to another video of the On Demand series. In this video, we want to have a look at the Palabas code, an open source Lattice Boltzmann simulation library for performing fluid flow simulations. Let's go for it. So in another video of the on-demand series, like one year ago, we covered, you know, the basics of OpenLB, another popular open source Lattice Postman code. And in this video, we want to go for Palabas, another code that is a little bit more popular than OpenLB because of a lot of features that it has, especially when it comes to high performance computing. And in another video, you know, later series, probably we cover the basics of Lattice Boltzmann and also for, uh, you know, things related to Palabas in on supercomputers and high performance computing. But in this one, in this current video, we just want to cover the basic installation routines, which is very similar to other things that we covered before. And also the way that you can run examples and develop your own stuff. So uh, we start by going to the website of Palabos. Uh, Palabos is developed in the University of Genève, Switzerland. So we search for Palabos code. Uh, as you can see, this is the website of the uh, University of Genève. And um, yeah, it says it's just for, for uh, like flow dynamics computation of flow dynamics written in C++ and Palabos stands for Pero Lattice Boltzmann Solver. So in order to install it, uh, we can go to getting started. It has a GitLab or GitHub repository, as you can see here. So yeah, this is the GitHub repository. And the way to install it, you can see that there are some requirements or prerequisites. A modern C++ compiler is needed, make and CMake. The way they can use with make and CMake, we have already covered that in a couple of videos. We had dedicated videos on the way that you can use CMake and Make. Please refer to those videos for more information. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, if you don't have them installed, you can install them on Ubuntu or Debian-based distributions with using APT and also for other distributions. And it says that we have a couple of other optional prerequisites for, for example, creating the images like figures and also for kind of exchange format and this kind of stuff and also for parallel computing. So we don't need to go for it uh, at this moment. We just, uh, I think we have all the prerequisites installed. And uh, I guess if we go to the getting started, it points, it refers us to yeah, this GitLab uh, repository and there is also short installation instruction, but I think it, it should be quite straightforward. You know, there is actually no installation routine here. We just need to grab the source code and then very similar to OpenLB, we should go to examples and try Try to make one example and when you run the example right like the build procedure of the example it also compiles the part of the library that are needed to run the example so this is exactly the way that uh, OpenLB uh, works uh, so very similar to OpenLB let's say and in order to clone it, uh, you know, uh, we can copy this, uh, you know, the, the dis uh, destination from like the HTTPS and then we go to the command line. So we open a terminal. And I can also go to desktop, oh, sorry. And git clone. And the destination that we just copied, oops. So this is the destination and we clone it. So it clones it to the Palabas folder directory here. So it's apparently a big directory, big uh, repository, let's say. And uh, yeah, here we go. And we can go to examples directory. You know, there are different types of ex examples, you know, in later videos when we start to have, you know, dedicated talks on OpenLB and Palabas, we probably go through more examples. But at this moment, I want to go for the, maybe the, the most famous benchmark in CFD, which is cavity flow in which we have a rectangle and then fixed boundary conditions on the surrounding and at the top edge or top boundary condition moves to the right. So as you can see, this is, uh, you know, the directory and uh, this is the source code of the example. 
you know, first I can run the example so you can see it and then I can quickly go through the source code and we perform also a little bit of modification on it. As you can see, there are also some directories already here uh, in order to, for, you know, directory for keeping the build files, storing the figures and also storing the, uh, some of the output files. So I go to the, to, to that uh, directory. So Palabos examples, and it was, uh, I think showcases. Yeah. Showcases and cavity 2d. So now we are inside the directory and the way that we can build it, you know, this is in, uh, this is mentioned here that how to run different examples. For example, the, also the benchmark the default benchmark is cavity 2d, but it says go to the build directory and then we call CMake from the CMake file that is placed in the parent directory, which is this one, which does a lot of, you know, things regarding like grabbing the library and also building the prerequisites which is in this case, the part of the library that is needed and then finding some other programs and dependencies. It can also be used to test the programs, test some features and these kind of things. So in this case, uh, yeah, it calls the CMake on this file because we are in the build directory and then we call make and we go back to the parent directory and run the program. So let's do that together here. I go to the build directory and I call CMake on the parent directory, which is, uh, you know, this is very important that we have like a modern compiler, like GNU version, GCC version 10. And then as you can see, it has detected also the MPI installation that I have and all the other dependencies. So now I can run the make command. I can also pass like, a, uh, you know, with a J switch, J flag turning on the parallel compilation process, which is, which can help to make it faster. So I execute it. And as you can see now it is, uh, already building also part of the library. And after that, uh, after this build is finished, we can, uh, run the program because as you can see, this is a really quite fast, uh, build process because I turned on uh, the parallel compilation and it is running with four CPU cores. So we wait for it and then we continue. So yeah, now the build is finished and the, the binary is placed in the parent directory with the name cavity 2D. So I go back to the directory, to the parent directory, and now we have this executable file. What we need to do is just running the cavity 2D. I can also run it, you know, in parallel because I saw that's a parallel library. And I, as I told you, this is one of the most interesting features of Polybos that it has really nice, uh, like a parallel applications. Like in this case, I can use it with four CPU cores to just make it faster. So I run it now. And then it starts to write a couple of, you know, output files in the fix and TMP directory. I go to the TMP directory and this is the output. As you can see, this is running quite fast because uh, the parallel computing uh, flag is on, or let's say I run that with using MPI. So this is the kind of output that I have. So I just stop it at this moment. I don't want to continue more. So this is, you know, the GIF files. And as you can see, this is like the top edge is moving to the right. And I should have yeah, also a couple of VTK files that it can post process and visualize using Paraview. I can also quickly show you how it can work. So I run Paraview here. And then I open like the TMP and the, this group. So I click apply and then I can see, as you can see these are like things, uh, the velocity and a velocity, normal velocity and the magnitude velocity, they're doing different things that we can visualize. And then we have also a time series showing how it, it goes on. And here we can also plot the streamlines or like the glyphs as the vectors, like vectors visualizing the velocity field and all these things. So, uh, this is the way that it works like out of the box, but let's quickly have a look at the source code. And here we can also do a little bit of like a kind of modifications on it. So, uh, I opened the source code using a Tom 
and uh, just uh, you know to cover the this is a really basic example of uh, you know of polybos so we de define this descriptor this is very similar to openably or any other lattice boltzmann method you know with these things uh, we cover it later in dedicated series but it means that it is 2d and then we have nine different discretized discretization for flow velocity field and also for space so the way that it works, as you can see, we should go to the main directory. It initialize the polybus using the direct using the arguments that are passed from the command line it says that the output directory is TMP and then here we have the flow pr parameters that are defined and uh, after that you know we have here like uh, the lattice we define the lattice with with the parameters that we define and the kind of dynamics that we need and then another you know on lattice conditions using the descriptor that we had and then we call the cavity setup function so in order to see how it goes on we should go up and see those functions so here the cavity setup uh, is this function that assigns the boundary conditions that we had to the lattice and in this case we, we can see the definition of the boundary conditions so we have like a boundary uh, velocity which is defined as like zero on all edges and then on the top edge defined using these parameters we apply like another boundary velocity equals to u which is defined using those parameters that you saw below and this t that you can see here is a kind of generic programming or template programming that is defined here so instead of saying that all those values that we have are double we say that we define the type first as t which is double in this case and later on we use just this one so in order to, like to convert it to low precision ones like float or anything else we can just change t to float here so now in this case it's a 64 bit precision and then there are also two other functions here that are called in the time loop like the write vtk and write give so those give files and vtk files that we saw they are not out of nowhere they are coming from these two functions actually so we need to define everything explicitly using all these codes that are uh, i would say quite easy to use so uh yeah there is also one thing here like a uh, kind of macro defined in the cmake uh like a build process this is not defined in this moment but you know these are the things that you can uh, have like a kind of communication between the build system and a program that define something and then the program that is compiled can react to that but in this case this is not defined in a cmake file so we don't need to uh, worry about it we come here because it, it says if not defined plb regression then these are the things that are happening so as you can see uh, the time loop starts here and then uh, it uh, it also has like a kind of uh, you know timer to say uh, like the time that is passed and then it says if it's just a time to write things write the gif and vtk fault these are not important and then here it also has you know something to print the t current time to the terminal but this is actually the most important thing light in a stream this is an important step like two important steps crucial steps in every lattice boltman simulation that you have the collide and then you have the stream like the propagation of the like the velocity components so this is as you can see performed on the lattice that we initialized and then that's it actually you know this is just a essential part you, these are all complementary things we could have just one line of loop time loop and then lattice collide in a stream and this is needed the only thing that is needed to perform the simulation and that's why i told you that this is quite simple library you just need to create a lattice assign the boundary conditions and then call the collide in a stream so um you know after covering the search code let's do a small experiment together here that we want to increase the reynolds number and this is a really nice aspect of lattice boltzmann they can also model turbulence easily you know in order to increase reynolds number in traditional safety codes like with finite volume of finite element you really need to consider some extra steps and you know more advanced numerical schemes but in this case i can easily do that so i can increase reynolds number you know dramatically but let's see if it works or not because in in this case we also we may need to modify part of the simulation let's see but let's see what happens so i changed that one i saved the file 
So I save the file after modifying it. And then I go back to the build directory. And I don't need to call CMake because the build procedure is the same. I just run make. And as you can see, now it only, uh, you know, performs the, like the compilation process on uh, the cavity to the CPP and the rest of the library, the part of the library, Polybus library that are needed are already compiled. So uh, yeah, now the cavity 2D is ready. I go back to the previous directory and now I run cavity 2D with four CPU cores. Now it starts to run, but uh, let's see if we have reasonable results here. So as you can see, it is running and um, So I stopped the simulation. Unfortunately, I should have like removed uh, the previous results files. This is, this is something that I forgot to do, but it, it's, it's okay. It was replacing those files. But uh, as you can see, at, at some point, we have we have like the average ener energy, not a number. And the reason is, and also here, you can see that it starts to work like at the vortex it starts to form, but some, you know, some instabilities start to appear here. And then we don't have reasonable, like as you can see, these are the lattice and we don't have any reasonable simulation output. So the reason is for capturing this Reynolds number correctly, we may need to increase the, like the lattice uh, size. In this case, it's 128. I can increase it, like double it, like to 256 or even 512, you know, these are uh, things that I, I need to try to see if it works or not. So in this case, uh, I save it and I go back here. So I need to go to the build directory and then here I can do all the things together. So I say go to the build directory, make and then come back here. So this is the syntax that you can use to run different Linux commands in one line. So it goes to the build directory, it makes it and then comes back here. So it is ready to run the program. So it's okay. And now uh, I can also remove the files in the TMP directory to make it easier to view what is going on. And then I run the cavity 2D case with four CPU cores. Let's see if the slatted size is okay for this simulation. As you can see now, the simulation is slower because I multiply the lattice size in each direction. So in, in 2D, it, it, the problem size is now four times, uh, let's say, bigger. And that's the reason the simulation is taking more time to complete for each time step, or it is cumulatively like for uh, like a group of time steps. So we need to wait a little bit for it to finish. And I just want to see if uh, later on, when it, the simulation goes on, I have like quite stable uh, results out of the simulation. Okay, as you can see, a very nice vertex is uh, like emerging out of this uh, kind of turbulence flow. So let's see it. And yeah, this is really nice. This is something that you can have in a cavity problem with high Reynolds number that as I told you, this is quite tricky to get in uh, like conventional and traditional uh, CFT codes. And this is really cool. As you can see, this kind of, uh, you know, the output that we have here is really nice. So I stopped the simulation, you know, it's not needed anymore. I just wanted to have this vortex appearing. This is really, really cool. And you can also try to play with these parameters a little bit more, like to change the final time and, you know, other parameters like the velocity and CD effect. So I hope you uh, enjoy this video and uh, find it helpful. See you in next videos.